Hi, this is the motor installation guide for the BBR Tuning Motor Ready Bike. There's a lot of unique features on this bike that are designed for the express purpose of mounting an engine, like a built-in 2.4 liter gas tank, a pre-mounted 36 tooth rear sprocket, and reinforced engine mounting points built into the frame. The BBR Motor Ready bike is great for both beginners and advanced riders. The bike allows for a fast engine install with a professional look and quality. Let's get started. First, mount your two-stroke motor onto the provided enforced mounting points. As you can see, the two-stroke fits perfectly onto this bike. There are no gaps and seams between mounting points, making this engine mount much sturdier than regular bikes. Use the metal tabs to secure the back end of your motor. Also use the washer and nuts to hold the front mount down. Moving on to a rear sprocket. You don't have to install the rear sprocket since it's already there. This is the most time-consuming part of any engine kit installation. Just balance the rear sprocket to make sure it spins evenly and then mount the chain. An easy method of finding unlevel spots on the sprocket is to hold a steady screwdriver on the frame of the bike. Let the tip of the screwdriver slightly touch against the sprocket and then let the sprocket make a full rotation. The screwdriver should make an indicative scraping noise on any protruding unlevel part of the sprocket. On spots that the screwdriver has made contact, use an allen key to tighten the spots down until the sprocket is completely true. Afterwards, remove the drive sprocket case so that we can install in our drive chain. I also removed the clutch plate case to help manually feed the chain and adjust the clutch plate later on. Remove the master link on the chain so that you can feed your chain through the drive sprocket. Gather and mark the length of chain for a tight fit between your drive and rear sprocket. Allow for about one extra length of play on your chain. Use a chain remover tool to remove the extra lengths of chain. Then reconnect the two ends with a master link. Next, we can install the chain idle pulley. Once you're done, check your work by making sure your chain is true. Moving on now to clutch installation. We'll have to remove the stock handle grips. Then we'll put in our clutch lever and tighten down with an Allen key. Next, grab the clutch cable and feed the nipple end into the hand lever. On the other end, thread on the heat shield spring. Then we're going to finally thread the cable through the clutch base, a small spring, and then the clutch arm itself. On the other side of the motor, we can reassemble the clutch plate. Tightening the flower nut will need adjustments. Make sure the flower nut is tight enough to hold the plate in place, but also loose enough to disengage from the clutch pads. Now onto the throttle and carburetor installation. Start by removing the other handlebar grip. Next, dry fit your new throttle grip and the top of your kill switch. Mark out where the plastic stud makes contact with your handlebars and then drill a small hole where you have made your mark. Afterwards, we'll screw in the throttle cable into the bottom of our kill switch. Take the nipple end of the throttle cable through the kill switch and attach it to the throttle grip. 
Then fit the whole installation onto your handlebar and lock it in place with the top of the kill switch. Moving on, we'll have to install the other end of the throttle cable into the carburetor. Step one, unscrew the top of the carburetor and take out all of the parts inside. That includes the spring, the plunger, the e-washer, and the jet needle. Once everything is out, reassemble everything outside of the carburetor. So we'll grab the plunger, drop the jet needle through the hole, then drop and align the e-washer. Make sure the needle and the e-washer is aligned with the slit on the plunger. Then place the spring on top. Thread the throttle cable through the screw top and the spring. Compress the spring to expose the end of the throttle cable. Then thread the cable through the slit and pull it through the slot, like so. Once you let go, the spring should hold everything in place. When reinstalling it back into the carburetor, make sure the slit side of the plunger faces with the guide peg inside of the carburetor. Insert the assembly slowly and then screw back on the top. When you pull on your throttle, it should move your carburetor plunger up. Now you can fit the carburetor onto your engine. Next, we'll focus on the electrical side of the engine. This involves your CDI and spark plug. All of the wiring will simply plug into receiving connectors. The black CDI wire connects with the black wire from the magneto and the black wire from the kill switch. The blue CDI wire connects with the blue wire from the magneto and the red wire from the kill switch. Once you have that, you can screw in the spark plug at the top of your engine and place on the CDI cap. You'll also mount your CDI on the inside of your frame with an additional metal tab. For the next part of the installation, we'll focus on attaching the fuel line. Take the fuel valve and screw it into the built-in gas tank. Don't forget to place in the red gasket though. Next, connect a short length of hose to the valve and the acorn filter. Then, another short length from the filter to the fuel receiver on the carburetor. For the very last part of this installation, we'll have to put on the exhaust pipe. This is very simple. Just put the exhaust in place and secure it with washers and nuts. Your BBR Motor Ready bike is now fully built.